Hi, I'm David Kwong. I'm a New York Times crossword puzzle constructor, a cruciverbalist, and I'm going to show you how to make a crossword puzzle. What is a puzzle? Well, puzzles are all around us. There are problems everywhere, but a good puzzle makes the solver feel smart. I've loved puzzles since I was a kid, and I'm also a magician, so I think that all magic tricks are puzzles. That's why I have those two worlds colliding. And as an enigmatist, somebody who performs puzzles, I am presenting them to you. I am challenging your brain, getting you to think outside the box, and hopefully have that aha moment when you can feel smart. The aha moment is when you crack the puzzle. You're solving a puzzle and everything just clicks into place. A crossword puzzle is a type of word puzzle where there's always an across and down. Every letter is checked, meaning if you don't know one way, you could probably figure it out the other way. It was invented in 1913. It's over 100 years old by Arthur Wynne. It first appeared in the New York world. In college, I started constructing crossword puzzles. A friend showed me how to do it. I started mailing them into the New York Times. They were getting rejected left and right, but finally I broke through. And uh, Will Schwartz, the editor, the guru of puzzles, is a uh, good friend and mentor now, and I've been writing for the Times and other major newspapers ever since. This is the size of the daily puzzle in the New York Times crossword, 15 by 15. Sunday's 21 by 21. Monday's the easiest day of the week, and Saturday's the hardest. The first thing you need to do when writing a puzzle is come up with your theme, a bit of wordplay that will run throughout the puzzle. And because I'm a magician, I'm gonna make the theme of my crossword playing cards. So my goal is to hide 10 jack, queen, king, and ace inside other words. After you've come up with your theme, you'll have to write down the long answers. And these are parallel in length. So if you have a 10 letter answer, you'll need another 10 letter answer. If you only have one 13 letter answer, that's fine. It can go right in the middle of the grid. And it's like this in every puzzle. Open up the newspaper and you'll see rotational symmetry. So in the case of this puzzle, I have marquee name. I'm going to put that right in the middle of the 15 wide grid. That's 11 letters. You can see that queen is contained there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven in the middle of the grid. Marquee name. And because I'm such a huge Zac Efron fan, let's put in Zac Efron, which gives us our ace and queen. And now to put in the black squares. We call this particular shape a Utah. And I'll place another one on this side. You don't want to put too many black squares because the words get smaller and the puzzle's too easy, which is why on a Friday and a Saturday there are fewer black squares and there's lots of white space, lots of long words, which makes the puzzle challenging. Zach Efron will have a triple stack here like this. And I will do one more, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, up here. Jack is almost impossible to hide between two words. So I'm just gonna make sure it doesn't start or end the phrase. Life jacket gets us our Jack. And because that's 10 letters long, I've decided to do skin graphs. We'll do the plural. Put in a black square here and another one down here. So we're good with Jack and King. We have a lot of options for T-E-N. 10 can be buried in a number of words because Zac Efron is eight letters. I'm gonna find a suitable one for this corner. Split and So here's our hidden 10. And let's talk about symmetry. It's not horizontal or vertical symmetry, it's rotational symmetry. So if we flip the board upside down 180 degrees, the black squares will be in the same places. So if I take a black square and place it here, I keep the symmetry by placing one there as well. I'll break up the middle in a nice pattern, keeping the symmetry. There are other rules when it comes to the black squares. You don't want clumps. You don't want it to look ugly, so you have nice diagonal lines often. Now you also want to place the black squares 
to break up difficult letter combinations. This F Z area is problematic. So I'm going to place one above the Z because it's easier to start a word with a Z than to end it because we have one here. Let's do one up here as well, which leaves us with this area, F blank blank E blank blank F, which should probably be everyone's favorite John Woo film, Face Off. So we have some difficult letter combinations. I'm going to have to address this Q. And then also over here, if I make this word start with an M and end with an F, I'm going to have to look up some letter patterns that are M blank 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 F. There are great databases that search entire dictionaries. And if you put in M question mark question mark question mark question mark F, you're basically telling the engine to look for those parameters. So I'll go to every puzzler's favorite website, onelook.com, and put in M. These are any letter, those question marks, and it's already showing me results. Make of is great. I see massive there. Most deaf is a great one. So M and ending in F, breaking up this area, put in most deaf. I'll keep the symmetry and put it up top as well. A couple here and ending in A. That'll probably be Iguana or Ithaca. And then this U blank blank A blank word, I would love to put Ureas in there, but Will Short says that does not pass the Sunday morning breakfast test. So Uvias, it is part of your I. Once you've placed your long theme answers in the grid, you're going to fill around it. Fill are all the other little letters that make up the puzzle. So you'll put in your black squares, you're going to break up difficult areas, and you'll try to fill section by section. It's a combination of looking things up and recognizing patterns. Okay. Another rule is that there aren't any two-letter answers. Everything has to be at least three letters long. And then every letter has to be checked. It has to be both across and down. So if there's a piece of obscure trivia, then you should be able to answer it by accessing it from the other direction. Saws, that's not good. I'm going to have to change this to make of, to interpret something. My apologies to most deaf, sometimes you have to change the grid. And that's Isai Morales of NYPD Blue. He's always in the puzzle because of his vowels, along with Yoko Ono and Brian Eno. Usually your theme answers are the long ones that run across the grid, but sometimes you can sneak them in the corners. And this is really nice. Royal Flush happens to be five and five, so I'm gonna put those in the corners. Maynad, a devotee of Dionysus, which I had to look up. And uh, we'll finish this out here with F major and ta-ta for now. Pretty cool. So now that you've set the grid, it's time to write the clues. There are easier clues on a Monday, harder clues later in the week. That's up to the editor's discretion. But uh, let's, let's write some clues for this puzzle. All right. Well, let's start with one of the themers. Life jacket could be clued as C safety need. Texan. An easy Monday clue might be uh, L, Paso resident. If it were a uh, Saturday clue, it might be AFC South member or something like that. You always see U in the puzzle. We'll put in the clue here, U mate for Ram. And then let's put a tricky one in for Tony and do B Arthur one one for Mame, I think. Once you've written your clues, you have to do a final check to make sure that none of the words in the clues appear in the grid already. So uh, I couldn't have, for example, for Texan, the clue could not be one who lives in El Paso because I have ones already as an answer in the grid. So El Paso resident works there. And voila, now you know how to make a New York Times crossword puzzle. And I couldn't help myself. I hid another puzzle 
in this video. The answer is a word that has to do with this theme. So don't go any further. If you want to solve it, go back and take a look. I'll wait. So how'd you do? Did you notice the different letters on my lapel pin? O-I-D-M-D-N-A. And you may have noticed that my shirt was changing color. And that will help you put those letters in order. Take those colors and their corresponding letters and put them in Roy G. Biv order and you get D-I-A-M-O-N-D. Diamond which nicely completes our royal flush theme. And just for fun, I hid three other words in the video as well that complete the set, but I'm not gonna tell you where those are. So take a look and happy solving.